Uh, welcome to our Python project on creating a cipher that, or a method that will encipher or decipher a Caesar shift cipher. Um, Caesar talks about the use of his um, shift cipher in um, during the Gaelic Wars, and you can read about it in um, this book called *The Gaelic War* by Julius Caesar. And what Caesar did to hide his message was he changed the letter of his plain text, which you can see down here is A, B, C, D, and E. This is a plain text alphabet. And he shifted it by three. So instead of B as in like baseball, he B would be encrypted as E. And A would be encrypted as D and so on. Um, you, you shift your alphabet down three and you get an encrypted alphabet by doing the shift. So we're going to write a computer program in Python that does the shifting for us both to encrypt a message and to decrypt a message. So let's get started. Alright, we're going to create a new window. File, new window. I'm just going to go ahead and adjust the window size so it fits in my recording screen here. And I'm going to go ahead and put a comment in for the file name. So pound file name colon Caesar shift py. And then um, I'm going to put that's the date that I did it. So this is 1-15-2016. OK. So now let's talk about the algorithm or the step-by-step -step process that, that we need in order to do the encipherment or de decryption of the message. So we need to um, get the message from the user. Then we need to encrypt the message. And then we need to output the message. And um, so let's start there. So we're going to say uh, msg is equal to input, enter, message. So if you want to put this into a function, you might say def introduction, open and close parentheses, colon, and then we'll tab this, and we'll return the message so it's usable in the other parts of our program. And if we're going to do things in with functions, then we're going to need a main method. And in this um, main, we'll create the message variable again, and we'll set it equal to our introduction. And then, of course, we need to, to run the program initially, we need to call our main method. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And you can go ahead and create a folder on your computer and save it.
call it Caesar shift dot py. Okay, so now we can continue on with um, ciphering the message. All right, so we're gonna write a method uh, called Caesar shift. So def Caesar shift. And then we'll pass in our message. Which is stored in the message variable that we created. And then what we need to do is to um, create an alphabet to pull from. So we're going to create an array and store um, the characters of our English alphabet. So we're going to say alpha is equal to bracket and then we're going to do create a character. So a character is in single quotes and I'm using capital A because I want my text to be in capital letters and I'm not going to go through and do this for each letter in the alphabet. And if you want to compact your array, you don't have to put spaces in. So I'm going to take the spaces out. And then I'm going to do D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q. It's very important not to miss any quotes. with a bracket. And actually this doesn't have curly braces. That's Java, so I'm going to erase my curly braces. But we do need a colon after the method definition. Alright, so now we have our base alphabet. And um, each of these numbers is represented by an index number. So basically um, a is at index 0. I'm going to make this a comment so you can see. And then B is at index 1. C is in index 2. D, C is at in index 2. E is at index 3, E is at index 4, F is at index 5, G is index 6, all the way to the end of our alphabet, which is then at index 25. Alright, so then in a Caesar shift, the shift num, the number of letters we shifted is by three. So I'm going to make a variable that says that the shift number is three. And I'll put in a comment that Caesar shifted his alphabet by three letters. So then what we want to do is we want to go through the message that we've passed in through our MSG variable. And we want to take each letter and then shift it by three. 
So we're going to say 4CH in MSG colon. We want to get the index of that letter in our base alphabet. So if we are going to say attack, then we need to get the index number of A. So we are going to say index is equal to alpha dot index of that character. So we'll pass in the variable ch. And now we want the index of the new index of our um, shifted letter. So we're going to say new index is equal to index plus the shift num, which was 3 in Caesar's case. So now we have a new index, and we, now we can go back into our uh, base alphabet and get that letter out of the alphabet. So we're going to make a variable called sh shifted character. is equal to alpha, which is our array of our base alphabet, at new index. And then we need to add it to our message. So we're going to say create um, a variable called ciphertext plus equals shifted character. And then each time through the loop, we'll see this happen. If you want to see this happen, we can put in a print statement here and say print ciphertext. And then each time through the loop, it'll print the text over and over again, and it should add a letter, a ciphered letter, each time. Okay, and then we're going to, in the end, return our ciphertext. So let's go down here then and call our Caesar shift method. So we're going to say ciphertext is equal to Caesar shift and then of course we're passing an MSG which is basic our plain text message um, when we write in our own language and we haven't encrypted anything we call that a plain text message alright so now we can um, test our encipherment method so let's go ahead and run our module and I'm going to say attack the troops at dawn. And you can try any message that you like. Oops, and I have an error. So it's saying in line 14, and global name MSG is not defined. So let's go back here. Here's MSG. Ah, uh, because we, I spelled it wrong up here. M, it should be MSG. So I'll do the same message again. And we have another problem. Local variable ciphertext reference before assignment. So here we're creating ciphertext. Um, and here we're using ciphertext. But it thinks that we haven't created it. So we can go up here to the top and just create a basic string called ciphertext. Let's try running it again. 
a message. Now it says that it can't find, the T is not in the list. So we need to check our alphabet to make sure T is in our alphabet. Okay, let's check our whole alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S. Well, T is in there. It worked for the first letter. Ah, I know why. Is because these are capital letters, and so we look here in our message, and it worked for D, but D is a capital letter because I mean A is a capital letter, so it's looking for the capital letters. And when it got to T, which is a smaller case, it didn't um, recognize it. So we just need to capitalize our message. So we can do that by um, we can say msg is equal to msg dot upper. And that should overwrite msg capitalize every letter in msg and then overwrite the previous variable which contained our lower text with our upper text. So let's run that and see if that works. Well, and we can see we're adding a letter each time to our cipher until we got to a space in our message. It doesn't like that we have spaces in our message because they don't it doesn't know what to do with the space because there's no space in our Caesar alphabet. It doesn't know what letter to actually um, use. So if we can check that by adding a conditional we can say if ch is equal to a space, then we'll pass it. We won't we won't pay any attention to it. Else colon, then we will do this, which is in check in our cipher alphabet. And again we'll still need to return it. Don't forget to add your colons after your conditional statements and to indent after a colon. So attack the troops at dawn. And I'm going to go ahead and leave the period out because that would be another th um, character that's not in our alphabet. So I'll just hit enter. And there we go. And the reason we're getting um, this pyramid of letters is because we asked it to print every time it was adding to the ciphertext. So here's our end result. So if we just take the print statement out now by commenting it out with a pound sign and then running it, we should get the behavior that we want. I'll say attack the troops and it's interesting. Okay, let me try running it again. Okay. That's an interesting behavior. Let me see if I can try to find the error. So what we need, the reason it's coming up blank is because, well, we took out this print statement. We want to print our ciphertext when it's all finished. So I'm going to go down here at the end in my main method, and I'm going to add print um, ciphertext.
and you might even want to add a, a header. So we're going to say encrypted message. And then if you want to um, print the original message, you can do that. So we can say print original message. And then of course we just need to add concat that with our MSG variable, which is holding our original message. So let's go ahead and run this. It should work now. There we go, a period is not in the list. So let me do this once more. If I wanted to um, add a period to this, I could say or ch is equal to a period. It should also skip that for us. There we go. And there's our original message and there's our encrypted message. So in our next video, we will write the method to decrypt a Caesar shift. See you next time.